are you? You good? You guys have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah? Didn't eat too much? No? Yeah? Yeah? I got, a, I got another Thanksgiving uh, tonight that we'll be doing. Seriously. And then um, I'll be fasting on Monday for at least four hours. So that'll be good. Um, if you got your Bibles, turn to um, the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. And as you're going there, I'll, I'll catch you up with some stuff that's happening. Say tonight. Tonight. Tonight, some of my friends and I are going to meet up here about 6. Let's just kind of keep this on the DL. Um, uh, Elizabeth Cooper and Daniel, her husband, her amazing husband, <laughs> they'll be here. Um, and then um, Michael Danforth was going to be here. Um, he's not going to be here now in flesh, but he'll be here in spirit. And, um, uh, and we're just going to do like kind of like a watch. So we're going to do just like a prophetic proclamation, intercession, kind of just like tag teaming between praise and, and just covering the region and uh, holding the region in our hearts and really just... So um, not, not really a, like a, a strong agenda, but we're going to show up. And I know that where there's two or more gathered... He likes to show up. You know, how many of you know, Holy Spirit like the party? Like, he's like, if you can get at least two of you <laughs> show up, I'll be there. <laughs> you, know, you know you like to party, I guess. All right, anyways. Um, so that will be good. So that tonight at 6. And then uh, next Sunday, okay, and let's also keep this on the DL, okay. That means on the down low, all right. Um, a friend of mine is going to be here. He's going to be preaching in the morning and at night. Uh, so, again, we're doing a Sunday night uh, next time. Um, I can't tell you who he is. Um, but what I can tell you is that his last name rhymes with ramp and begins with the, le- with the letters S-H. Shh. Shh. Thank you. Um, so that would be good. Charlie's coming to town. Ta- uh, so this is, this is also kind of cool. So Charlie Champ, Anthony, Elizabeth, a guy named Greg Daly. I don't know if you remember him. Um... Beverly and Henry Klopp are going to be uh, retreating next week, talking about some big stuff. We're working on some stuff, and, uh, and it's pretty exciting. And uh, we're working on a, on a classic, on like a classic. There's a, a network that was actually started by John G. Lake, uh, originally known as the International Apostolic Congress. Started by John G. Lake, and we're getting to um, uh, kind of take it in the garage next week. And we're looking forward to bringing it out of the garage next summer. And it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Anyways, SRC is all a huge part of it. I know I'm being vague. I did that on purpose. It makes me look cooler than I actually am. All right. <laughs> Working on some stuff. It's going to be huge. So anyway, it's going to be good. Um, awesome. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to uh, quickly uh, d- dive into some passages here, into some text, um, set things up. Elizabeth and Daniel are going to come back with Melanie. And we're just going to respond by praising and worshiping Jesus. And isn't it funny? Um, whoever thought that there would be a day that just coming to church and worshiping Jesus would make you like a revolutionary. <laughs> you know, like, you know, whoever thought there would be like, like just going to church and singing means like, we're taking a stand. Like, you little rebel you, right? Like, so anyways, you know, it feels, you're not a, re- you know, we, we, don't, we don't take on that identity. But anyways, uh. It's a good time to be alive, and uh, you're going to be okay. Um, awesome. In Joshua chapter 6, um, this has just been, this whole thing has just been around lately. My son got this um, word a few weeks ago. He released on Sunday morning, then we went over to Yakima, and he released it, like, in their services, about, like, Jericho coming down. A word about the barriers being removed by the Lord. Um, this, is a, this is a small business Sunday. It's our first time doing this. At the end of the service, we're going to have our small business leaders come up. And we're going to, the pastors and elders are going to um, uh, anoint the business leaders with oil. Okay. And we're believing for um, Jericho walls to come down in their, in their life. And, and I don't just see this as a one-time. You're like, but I'm not a business leader. 
I'm a teacher, or I'm a, I'm a, what, I'm a something else, or what, whatever they're all, okay, but this is what I know, that the Lord is actually speaking to us here at Sarah Bible Center about the silos of ministry coming down, which means that in the past, we've defined ministry as apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, and they all get microphones in a stage, okay, and we say that, that, that this, what Darren's doing, is ministry, and then what we say is, we say that the win is, man, if we could get you out of your profession, if we could just get you out of your profession and get you here in the building at SRC, and if you could just be ministering here at SRC, then you will have arrived, and then you can really start to make a kingdom impact. And that's been kind of the, the model of the church, is like you find the most talented people in the culture, and then you rip them out of the culture, and you get them in the church. We need the most talented people in the church. And I'm telling you, that is, that is not the model that Jesus gave to us. No, no, what Jesus did is he taught equipping and empowering everyone and then sending everyone to go and herald in good news everything. So if you're a Christian, you're a minister. What I like to say, and that might not necessarily be the fact, you know, um, but what, what I like to say is that if you're a member at SRC, you are a minister, and we are going to do everything possible just short of sinning to see your ministry efficiency go through the roof in 2021. Yeah, so here's what our role is as pastors and elders at SRC is to figure out where you are within the culture and to figure out how do we serve the talents and the giftings within your life. What, do, how, what, what can we do to partner with Holy Spirit to see you awakened to your identity and destiny? Like what does it take to get you lit up right where you're at? Because we don't need you here we need you there, and we need you alive and well with his spirit within you. We need apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. We need them at Microsoft. We need them at Amazon. We need them at home. You stay-at-home moms, and you stay-at-home dads get a job. And, you know, you know like, we need you. Okay, we need you. Uh, and, and that's not by, I'm just having fun. But, like, we need you to be you where you're at with, with the great I am in you. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord spoke to me, and uh, I thought our family was going to go to Disney World. Yeah, I told you that story before. I said to Andrew at a Mexican food restaurant, I feel like the Lord's telling us that we're supposed to go to Epcot. And Andrew goes, you know, no, that is not what God's saying. We, we're not Disney World people. We're Disneyland. We're like, we're West Coast West Coast, what represent, right? And, and I'll tell you what happened with that. Like, God kept speaking to me. He kept saying, Epcot. I've got, I was like, what, did, God, what are you saying? We're, so we're at the Mexican food restaurant, I'll explain. And I, there's a, there's, and the Lord's already been speaking to me about Epcot, and there's a family sitting right across the, the aisle from us, like the aisle, whatever that is, and um, they're talking about Epcot. And this is like, okay, and this is like just before going into 2019. All right, so that, like, we're, like, so we're going, we're finally going to sleep, and I'm like, God, What's the deal with Epcot? So I Googled Epcot to find out, like, what does that even mean? Because all of Disney's parks are always, like, Adventureland and, like, Amazing Land and Fantasia, like, all these awesome names. Epcot is just not a cool name. You ever think about that? Like, who wants to go to Epcot? You tell your kids, you want to go to Epcot? They're like, no, that sounds dumb. <laughs> right? So I looked it up. What does it even mean? It means experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Walt Disney had a vision to establish a literal place that would celebrate the ingenuity and creativity of humanity and the future of humanity. He had, in fact, if you just Google Epcot, you will see this huge diagram, this huge drawing. It's massive. And Walt Disney's staying right in front. Now, they did build an Epcot after he had died, but it was not the manifestation of his vision. People, people could not grasp the magnitude of what he was actually seeing. When the Lord spoke that to me, all of a sudden, like, it ignited. The Lord wants to build a city. He wants to build cities inside of cities. Heavenly 
prototypes, a, a, a sadek, a, a, a company of people um, that are walking in the order of Melchizedek, kings and priests that don't define Christianity as attending a Sunday service once a month, uh, like, like an, an actual a company of people who've been awakened to who is residing and abiding within them, and that they actually have a revelation of where they are abiding and residing. This place, a revelation of the body, that we are, Paul would say, the, the church is like a, a body many members connected together and that we would begin to see the Lord's prayer actually begin to manifest that his kingdom would come, his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is what I know, that, 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 that God is going to begin to supernaturally, that's why I said supernatural because the Bible's like a little bit supernatural from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It reeks of the supernatural. When your Christianity's no longer supernatural, you have, you have, <laughs> I'm not going to say that, but okay, but we can't do that to the Bible. We can't do that to our faith. We cannot make this sterile. We cannot fix our faith. It is supernatural. It is loaded. It is very fertile. It impregnates everywhere the living word goes. It's alive. It's active. It's loaded. And the living word of God is all up inside of you. And it's time for the church to wake up and realize that we do not exist to fulfill some sort of mission statement for a secular institution. That we exist to resemble, to reflect, to radiate the living, breathing God that we've been created in His image and likeness, put on earth to terraform the earth, to bring earth back into its original Edenic state. That this thing is God's project and we are the ones that He he has empowered and equipped and filled with his very own spirit. That the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells within me. And so there must be a little bit more to living than just going to church and trying to be moral and trying to be a, a good little Christian and going to work and not forgetting to recycle, recycle and separate the, and vote Republican and watch Fox News and do this and do that and do this and do that. And if I could just do this, I'd be a good little Christian boy. And if I could just do that, the sin Cosmic, like, stop it! That doesn't look like Jesus. It's time for us to get our seed back. It's time for us to start realizing that true love brings forth multiplication. It's time for us to get our fertility back, church. It's time for us that when we come against Jericho walls, we don't say, well, I guess this is just the way it ought to be, culture of honor. I'm just going to honor Jericho. God didn't honor Jericho. He destroyed Jericho, and he was glorified through the destruction of that entire city. Three of you, good. I'll say it again. God did not honor Jericho. He destroyed Jericho. And he was glorified through the destruction of that city. You better shake yourself of whatever Christian passivity or whatever you taught, whatever you were taught Christianity looks like. Christianity looks like Jesus. And not just, and not just baby Jesus in a manger that glows when you plug it in. Christianity looks like the Jesus of Revelation who comes back tatted up with a sword coming out of his mouth, riding on a, on a horse, coming back to judge nations, coming back to restore, to execute the justice of God back in its complete fullness, partnering with the awakened sons and daughters of the manifested sons of God that aren't just on the earth and they're little, you know, you know <laughs> just doing what we do sometimes. No, that he's going to return back for a bride that's awake, that's alive, that's not grumbling or complaining, but a generation that is shouting and not just some sort of hyped up little, we got a drum machine, let's shout. No, but from this place where we know the great I am, where we actually know God. We don't just know about him. We say, no, I don't, I don't care what you tell me. I don't care what's been defined. You don't understand. God is in me. God is in me. God is in me. We gotta, we're coming into this, this realization of our significance that we are being awakened into this reality that we've been lied to. We've been told a lot of things that this is what a good little Christian does. 
and that just sit low in the boat and don't rock the boat, just, just do whatever. Meanwhile, a, a world's going to hell, and we're tricked into thinking that that's because of some sort of political system. The church has advocated her responsibility to take care of the poor, and now we say it's the government's job. The very first Seattle in, uh, the very first Seattle, <laughs> the very first hospital in Seattle was started by the church. That's why when you go to Olympia, there's, there's, there's the, the statue there, our Washington State statue. It's two nuns. Why? Because the church said somebody needs to do something. And the church said, we'll do it. Hospitals, schools, the pillars of society instituted because of an awakened people. And now we've boiled it down to a Sunday. The Jerichos are coming down. The defeater beliefs are being dealt with. We're awakening to who we are. And we're also getting a revelation that if we can see it, we can have it. And there's some things that need to be had. Because there are agendas in high places. And it's time for Christians to step into the revelation that you're the head and not the tail. And that means that for some of you, you're going to get promoted. And others of you, you're actually going to start things this year. Some of you, you're going to step into favor this year. Some of you, your, your wife's going to say, it doesn't make much sense for you to keep working at that job. It's just because look at what's happening over here. Some of you, you're going to have that conversation with your wives. It doesn't make any sense for you to keep doing that. You need to follow your favor. Because we're not here to build a great Sunday morning service. We're here to transform Seattle. We're here to transform the Pacific Northwest. We're here to transform cities and nations. And that means that SRCers need to be on the front lines of business and education. SRCers need to be on the front lines of media and entertainment. SRCers need to be on the front lines of technology. Do you guys know, I don't know if I ever told you this, I got a prophetic word from Bobby Connor to this house regarding an anointing that there's going to be, a, 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 I'll call it a glory realm, that IT guys are going to start coming to the church here, and they're going to start tapping into something. They're going to start getting technologies released to them, and it's going to bring forth uh, extravagant wealth into the church. I got, it, I got it written down and transcribed somewhere. We'll get, it, we'll get it posted. Why would God do that? Because it's time for us to arise and shine, for God to be glorified through everything that we are doing. It's time for us to actively participate and to partner with the seven spirits of God so that everything we do is supernatural. Whether it's design or it's dealing with efficiency, that we would step into a new glory realm so that his kingdom really can come. And it's not just a metaphorical thing. Things can change. Things can change. And to the degree that we can, that we can just kind of say, well, it's not that bad. To the degree that we can engage with whatever sort of ignorance that makes us feel better for us. No, there, there needs to be some stuff that bothers you. There needs to be some things that frustrate you. And if you don't have anything like that, then we need to start praying a very dangerous prayer. God, give me your heart. Break my heart with the things that break your heart. Fill my heart with the things that inspire your heart. How many of you, you're going to do some cool stuff you're, you're in, in, in this next year? Wave at me. You just know. You, you might not know what it is, but you just know you're, you're about to do some cool stuff. You just, you just know that you're on a journey, and it's going to require transition. You feel, you feel the resistance, and you're up against some stuff, and you don't know what to do. How many of you, that's you? All right, every, Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was shut up inside and out because of the people of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see that? I have given Jericho into your hands with its king and mighty men of valor. All right. 
Joshua and all the Israelites were on a journey. The only problem is they had a big barrier, a big city with big walls, 40 feet of wall up on a hill, which would have felt like a 10-story fortress. So imagine you're on a journey, and the only way to get to Izquah, you're on the 90, and there is, a, there is this massive, you know, horrible example. Like, like, here you have Joshua, like, here, God, you're on, taking us on a journey. We can't get there because of this thing. Now, God says, you see this problem? This problem is my gift to you. A problem is just an excuse to praise God. And this is what God says. Joshua, you see that? Of course he saw that. It was right there in front of them. This massive structure, this massive city. And God says, Joshua, do you see that? Listen, you need to look at the obvious defeater beliefs within your life. You need to look at the obvious lies. You need to look at those giants that are trying to intimidate you. You need to look at those things that are causing fights within your marriage. And you need to hear what God's saying this morning. You see that? That's my gift to you. This is just an excuse to praise God. You know, I have to think, people talk about David and Goliath. Hey, when do you think David died? When do you think Goliath, David didn't die? When do you think Goliath died? A lot of people think, well, it might have been when the rock hit his head. But it could have been he was still kind of breathing, which is why David had to take his own sword and, and, and hack the giant's head up. Like, so when do you think Goliath died? I think Goliath died the moment God said, David, you see that? The moment you see something through his eyes, it's already changed. Why? Because David didn't kill Goliath. God killed Goliath through David's obedience. And Joshua and the Israelites didn't take down those walls. God took down those walls through their obedience. You see that? You see that, that very thing that the enemy's been able to exploit us with to get us to shake our little antennae at God. God, how dare you? Like, like the enemy is so um, faithful to come and to exploit our pain to get us to doubt God. And you know what God's saying this morning? You see that? That's my gift. You see, so many times we're looking for, you know, a, a precious, glorious gift. And oftentimes we miss out on the reality that the gifts that God wants to give us are the gifts that we've been cursing. So this is what, God, so this is what he says. God, God, God gave him instructions, and, and, and we know the story. And, uh, and, he, and he, so he appoints um, priests, and, um, and, and then he says, and he, and he tells them to take the Ark of, of, of the Covenant. Verse 7, he says, uh, go forward, march around the city, uh, and let them in pass uh, with the Ark of the Lord. The Ark was the manifest presence of God. And so they were going to go for, for six days. Six, the priest, okay? Um, just declare with me right now, I... And, what's he going to say? A priest. That we are part of the priesthood of believers. That we are part of a Melchizedek generation. A company of kings and priests according to a righteous order. An order of perfection. Seven. So for six days, the seven priests would take the seven trumpets and they would go once a day for six days. They would blow their horns, okay, um, uh, uh, with the presence of the Lord. And then it says, verse 15, on the seventh day they arose early at the dawn of the day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout, why? The Lord has given you the city. It's to press it. What did it say they did? Verse 20. So the people shouted. 
shouted. That word shout is the word ruah. I'm fluent in Hebrew. It's, it, it's a ruah. <laughs> Everyone say it together. <laughs> Ruah. Here's what it means. To split. To split the ears. To shout with a, an alarm of joy. An alarm of joy. To cry aloud. To destroy. Can I make a suggestion really quick? Destruction needs to be a core value for sons and daughters in the kingdom. Why? There's some stuff that can't be restored. We don't build on demonic foundations. We do not build on Babylonian foundations. We build on Christ Jesus, and if it is not of him, destruction is a core value. It means it's a sound. I'm going to read it again. It's a sound that brings a splitting to the ears. It's a shouting, an alarm of joy. Isn't this amazing? An alarm of joy that also brings destruction. It's a joyful noise. It's Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise. It's a sound of triumph. Now, let me ask you this question. How do you shout for joy when nothing's happened yet? How do you make a victorious sound when you are still practically defeated by that wall? That's the power of praise. The power of praise takes you from this moment in time some of y'all, y'all need to pay attention because I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> Praise is a time machine. You don't do it, you get into it. You get into it. It becomes you. You're not just, I'm just going to praise the Lord. What are the words on the screen? I can't, I can't praise this song. They do Bethel here. Like, We don't praise praise. We don't worship worship. We get into that realm of praise. It's a time machine. And when we get into it, the facts do not matter. Why? All that matters is him. He transcends time. He transcends matter. Because he spoke, the elements existed that could be fashioned and formed into those walls. If his speech alone could create the matter that could be um, crafted to create these walls, then how easy would it be for him to turn a city to dust? That thing that's robbing you of your praise. How tricky is the enemy? If we could just say, God transcends every obstacle. Can I tell you something? We are not Joshua. This is the part of the sermon where I say, and now you and I are little Joshua's, and we're going to lead our little people around, around, around the city. And No, no, no. No, this is when I tell you about Jesus. You know that Joshua's name was Yeshua? Yeshua, translated to English, is Jesus. That God chose Yeshua, Joshua, to be the agent of deliverance, to usher God's people in from slavery into their place of rest. Jesus, the true and perfect Yeshua, who comes, lives, dies, resurrects to bring all of humanity out of Egypt and into the place of rest. That Joshua, who had to uh, conquer 
and, and, and bring the, the God's people into victory that on the cross, Jesus conquered every enemy, sin, sickness, death, all the agencies of hell were conquered at a moment on the cross that whosoever would believe in him can step in. Some of us need to get our ruah back. Because why? The enemies lied to us and said, you can't ruah till the wall comes down. When you step into praise, the wall's already down. When you step into praise, your feet are already on the dust. We can ruah in this place this morning, knowing that there is a grace for us to step into land and opportunity that's already been paid for by our Lord Jesus Christ. The only thing that's keeping us from the fullness of our inheritance is our own minds. I'm waiting for Jesus to come. He did. I'm waiting for the, the greater glory. The greater glory is a person. It's the spirit of Christ Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. He's here. This is a horrible day to be a demon. Why? Because in light of the blood of Jesus, you have no power. You are a mockery. You are, you are a silly pants. And whatever has been your practical, functional Jericho, whatever has been your practical, functional Goliath, this is what I know. It might be taunting you. That doesn't mean it's not defeated. Right here, right now, demands a choice. Will you trust Jesus? And will you ruah all up in front of that wall? Things are changing. Paul, remember Corinthians? We'll, we'll get back to Corinthians in January. We're going to take a little break. We're going to focus on praise. Why? Because Christmas time is all about praise. The whole Christmas story is all about praise. The wise men, what they do? They came and praised. Right? Like, like Mary found out she was praying. What did she do? She broke out in praise. Christmas time is all about praise. So we're just going to focus on praise. And we're just going to do a lot of corporate praise. What are we going to do? We're going to ruah. We're going to stand on the earth saying, it's already done. It's already done. The veil's already torn. The land is open. Who's, who's willing to go in? Who's willing to occupy? Who's willing to take a risk? Who's willing to leave the comfort zone of, of whatever they have to offer you? Jesus wept, but he won't no cry, baby. And he wasn't weeping to exploit people and manipulate people so he could get what he wanted. Jesus wept with deep, heartfelt sympathy. With, sin he, he, with empathy, he would relate with people. But he wasn't no victim. He was victimized beyond anything. I've ever seen in any other model, in any other religion, he was victimized, and yet he never became a victim. He is the risen Lord. He is the risen God. And it is time for us to arise, to resurrect with Christ. You're weak? Awesome. He's strong. Got some issues? Awesome. He died for them. You don't need to be shamed by me. You need to come to Jesus. You need to believe in Jesus. You need to make Jesus your Lord. This church can't save you. This church will only frustrate you if you're not saved. The only way you're going to be able to stick around here, you're going to have to be saved. 
If you aren't saved, you're going to get really bummed out around here. You just be like, man, too many people. You get Holy Spirit and you like, that would have annoyed me, but I love you. I don't even know why I love you, but I love you. I don't know why. I love you. You're going to do stuff that matters. You're going to create stuff. You're going to destroy stuff. You're going to rebuild stuff. You're going to restore stuff. You're going to do it for the Lord. Because SRCers don't tap dance for no one. It's unto the Lord. That's what I love about Elizabeth and Daniel. Would you guys come? Everything that these guys do. You guys see these guys as, as worship leaders, but they do so much more. If you guys only knew, you'd be, it, they're awesome. Here's what I know. Everything they do, it's as worship unto the Lord. Ruah. To split the ears. To make a sound a victory before anything's changed. It's faith, the substance of things hoped for and not yet seen, but seen. I saw it before I saw it. This place, this building, it was seen before it was seen. You, you were seen before you were seen. Things change when we see before we see. We see it, we rejoice in it, we give glory to God in it, and we get into praise knowing we can pull the future into the present, knowing that things can change, knowing that things can shift. I prophesy to the business leaders, your business is about to shift. You're about to step in from the ordinary into the ex extraordinary, from the natural into the supernatural. I, I prophesy you're about to see those walls come down. You're about to be seen for who you really are. You're about to be appreciated and celebrated because of the glory of God that's been seated inside of some of you. You're going to begin to dream again. I mean to really dream because that's where you see and you have to see it before you see it. And, and, and some of you are going to begin to give praise in the very areas that you used to curse and complain and you're going to put away the cursing and the complaining and you're going to step into the high praise of God. He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be celebrated. Those walls, they will come down. Those walls, they will come down. Why? They've already come down. They've already come down. The giant, it'll come down. Why? It's already come down. The moment David said yes, the giant was already dead. The moment Joshua said yes. The walls were already dead. What's your answer going to be this morning? What's your answer going to be? He's looking for your yes. He's look all his promises are yes and amen. The yes deserves a yes. The yes deserves a yes. The yes deserves a yes. May your yes be yes and your no be no. May you not be double-minded. May you be focused. Focused, alert, with your blinders on, with your eyes on the prize, pressing forward, pushing in, saying, I've been created for such a time. If you can see it, I want you to engage with the Ruah right now. If you can see it, make a sound of joy. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. If you can see it, the Lord said to Joshua, can you see it? This is my gift to you. This is my gift to you. This is not a problem. This is not a problem. This is not a problem. This is your gift. This is your gift. This is your gift. This is your gift. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord with gladness.